today. I'm joined by Conrad Agramont, our CEO here at Agile IT. How are you doing today, Conrad? Doing good. So as always, going to go over a little bit of news first as we get started. Um, COVID-19, the coronavirus, it's been all over the news. Um, last week during the Tech Talk, I mentioned that the CDC had come out with emergency guidance um, saying that all businesses should have a remote work plan as part of their um, business continuity plan um, in response to COVID-19. Um, in the chat box, and for those of you watching on YouTube, I'll post the link in the description, uh, Microsoft today released a Power Platform template for crisis communications, um, which is kind of built to notify people um, on remote work, where you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do um, in a time where it may not be a pandemic, it may be a natural disaster, um, a gas leak, there was a chemical explosion at a um, plant in Las Vegas a couple years back and shut down about 20 blocks of businesses. Um, during the California fires, O'Reilly Books um, had to shut down their headquarters, as which also included all of their on-premise web hosting. So their online coursework, everything was inaccessible to their users. They got quite a beating in Twitter, but they came back with a really good response um, afterwards explaining what they had learned and started moving everything to the cloud. So powerful lessons there. I've got a blog that should be coming out tomorrow or Monday on um, stress testing your remote work plans for business continuity. And I hope that that's gonna be informative. But today what we're gonna be discussing is all the Active Directories. Now, a lot of times people just think there's the two. There's Active Directory and Azure Active Directory, but there's really quite a few of them. And that was the trivia question I posed at the end of last week's Tech Talk, um, is how many are there? Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Conrad, who's gonna take us through all of this. Yeah, so one of the one of the topics that we go go through quite often with a lot of the customers, either when they're just coming in and, and, and wanting to make a change, or even if we're in, in a project, um, there's a lot of confusion because as we start to talk about Active Directory, if we just use that name, things can be very, very confusing. And one of the things that you know, I always find to be very important is um, you know, really explaining what are these different pieces so that we can all be on, on the same page. So, um, I'm sorry. So one of the first things that we really wanna cover is understanding the different levels of responsibilities because this makes a very big impact on you know, when you look at these different active directories and whether it's something I have to fully manage myself something that's managed as a service uh, and something that just may run on something. So for example, when we're talking about on-prem, we're really saying that in your environment, you're really responsible for everything, the storage, the networking, the pipe, the air conditioning, make sure that the, uh, you know, that the surge protector to your service isn't connected to the light switch. These little problems all the time, you know, you wanna make sure that they're covered, but you're fully responsible to that for that. When you go to IaaS or infrastructure as a service, this is really, really where, you know, from let's say from the Microsoft perspective, because we are 100% uh, Microsoft Cloud focused. Uh, you know, this is a place where Microsoft is handling all those power virtualization platform pieces, but it really just gives you a virtual machine for you to do anything that you need on top of there. As an example, so this is a place where you have some areas of responsibility you you are alleviated from, so that but you still are concerned with the other pieces as you start to move up the stack, whether it's a platform, as a you know, as a, as a service part of it or really SaaS so from, from a software as a service perspective, you don't really run any of it, you just leverage the services off of that. Now I'll go back to these pieces as we go through all the different uh, active directories. So, you know, when we think about, well, first off, what is a directory? What's the responsibility of a given directory? Well, you know, the first thing that we normally naturally think about are, are people. Um, and for those of you that have been around for quite some time, you remember these, these books that used to be dumped on your doorstep that really kept track of this. So like the white pages where you can have a name, a phone number, maybe there's a location. And so you get you get this this one lo this one area in a book that really describes, you know, what you're looking for for people. Um, the next real area is, well, you know, what about if I'm looking for specific services, right? So I'm looking for a service that's out there. And in this case, I might be looking for a plumber, might be looking for a gardener, might be looking for babysitters, whatever that is. Here, like in the old fashioned yellow pages, apparently they're still there and you can still get them on your doorstep or you go online. But this is really focused on services by giving categories. So you're trying to find either some type of people or some type of service. These things are important because you're really trying to find something and then get access to it and maybe do something with it. So keeping that in mind that we're trying to locate, get access and view it is, is really at the heart of, of any type of directory. So here's a here's a little cheat sheet that uh, you know kind of 
go through some of the many of the areas that we're going to go through um, as I go through the session. We'll talk about them even more. Uh, what's really important when you look at the deployment, when talking about server, we're really thinking about infrastructure service and maybe some on-prem as well. So, um, you know, and again, going back to that area responsibility, things that you must do. Now, when we look at these different direct active directories, now when we say all the active directories, you're looking at the name and it's because what you're really thinking about are again those people and those services that you're trying to get access to but they really function in different areas and i'll walk through this and, and i'll show this again uh, really at the end so when you think about you know the directors here really where our focus is really around the identity now these this identity this view of like let's say uh sean for example sean spicer his the representation of who sean spicer is may be located in lots of different areas including active directory local active directory or an Azure Active Directory, or through some of these other services. But as far as I know, there's only one Sean Spicer that I know here. Now that name's used by lots of people, but the actual <laughs> Sean Spicer I have here- I'm the real Sean Spicer. Physically next to me, there's really just one view of him. And then there's these concepts and these 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 views of him uh, all around. But really we wanna bind them to one uh, uh, kind of coordinated view of this identity. So, you know, the first place where we like to start is local Active Directory. So it's really important for us is when we start talking to customers that we really like to use the name local Active Directory. Some people use classic, some just say Active Directory, but we like to, we like to use local Active Directory. And we're really talking about the traditional uh, Active Directory that was a part of Windows Server. Been around for years. Really, this is what you had to do when you're running a enterprise or small business. So this way you didn't have, you could, you could have one username and password that, that you can log on to the desktop, have the same type of access into a server, same type of access to an application. So it was a, it was a central point in the beginning of, of having this, this identity of who you are. Um, and again, it's, it was a fundamental part of what you had to do and many, many organizations still have that. However, when we're just starting out with new new deployments, we actually try to get away from, from this if, if we don't really, really need it for whatever reason that might be. So really the next part is, is looking at, well, what does this look like? So this is kind of a standard view of local Active Directory. Um, you know, it's it's deployed here in this particular view at the com customer's premise. So it's kind of on-prem uh, in your environment that you're plugged into. And this is where you get access to whatever services that you might that you might need. Now, for those of you that, that have done some level of administration, you'll recognize this. Now, one thing to point out in here is that, you know, you're, that there's this hierarchical view, and I have a whole session that, that we'll do some other time about this, but you'll notice that there is this kind of common hierarchy. Yours probably looks very similar or, you know, very deep, with lots of different names. A lot of times these, these, these local Active Directory instances, you start off in a good way, but over the years, over time, over administrators, they start to get, you know, very uh, nested, lots of different names, the naming structures change. It's very hard to kind of keep up to date, it's something we find to be very, very common. So. Again, this is a local Active Directory, very traditional, built on Windows Server. They have, many organizations have it, their workstations connect into it, they have people connect into it. This is the this is the local Active Directory. Now, next up is really Azure Active Directory. Same kind of name, there's a clear difference. Where Azure Active Directory is still trying to provide services to, to find users and, and other services. The difference here is that it is managed as a cloud service. So this is something where Microsoft is managing it. Think about that, the areas of responsibility. You know, this is more of a SaaS-based type of service. Now, in this SaaS-based type of service, you know, again, we're trying to create this connectivity of representing who the user is, but we also need some way of connecting those users who are in Azure Active Directory with your local Active Directory that, that's on-prem. So this hybrid scenario is available, something called Azure AD Connect, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And this was this is what allows you to, to extend this, user, uh, this view of a user who is locally on local Active Directory with Azure Active Directory, but they are not the same thing. OK, now, if you have local Active Directory that's deployed in maybe a, some kind of cloud service, whether that was an Azure, AWS or whatever, whatever you might have, if it's running a virtual machine and you install a Windows server, that is still a local Active Directory instance. Now, again, you can wire these things up together and they're great. Now, some of the limitations are that right out of the box, just by itself, uh, there's not really a lot of protection, um, you know, beyond some of the username and passwords. So we always recommend putting something like Microsoft uh, Enterprise Mobility Plus Security, or just really putting what's uh, Azure Active Directory P1, P2, additional licensing. So you can do MFA and conditional access and all this great, great kind of thing in the cloud and even on-prem. But again, 
Azure Active Directory, not the same as local Active Directory. So, you know, we think about, again, that identity being the central piece and, and with Azure Active Directory providing these types of services, you know, one of the things that it gives you, just like I talked about, are these other areas where you can provide better management and extension in terms of protecting and controlling where people get access, you know, should they use multi-factor. Um, again, these are the additional services that Azure Active Directory provides. Local Active Directory can do some of those things with lots and lots of other third-party tools, and then you have to keep them up to date and the servers. It's really a pain. Um, however, again, these areas are intended to work with one another. So when we synchronize them, now we can have a representation, again, of Sean Spicer, who is locally on Prem, in, uh, on premise with a local Active Directory, synchronizing with Azure Active Directory, can't say it enough, it is still very separate. But now that you have this, Sean Spicer can now, with the same username and password, log into these other services that are in the cloud, like Office 365, as well as um, Salesforce and lots of other applications that are out there that, that support this. So, you know, having this also allows me to control things like access to, to, to devices through the cloud, uh, access to other types of providers for authentication services. So Azure Active Directory provides all this other value added services, uh, you know, that, that's a part of the platform and you get access to that by synchronizing with your local Active Directory. Remember, the local Active Directory had, had, had its place, sometimes has its good place, but it doesn't do all these other services that, that, that you want. Now, one that I'm really not gonna talk in depth about, but this kind of single sign-on capability for these other providers was also provided with the window, with the Windows Server feature called uh, Active Directory Federation Services. But there, you also have to be managed the server infrastructure, load balancer, uh, ADFS proxy proxy servers, and there it just didn't have the same level of capability and extensibility that you would have with Azure Active Directory. So it's really the, the approach that we go is, is start there. Even if you're not doing any other cloud capabilities, leveraging Azure Active Directory with your local on-prem would be the route to go. If you have ADFS, we really should talk about scratching that thing and, and just using Azure Active Directory um, from the start. So, you know, talk a little bit about this connectivity. So. You know, when you have Windows Server, you know, and you have this local Active Directory using Azure AD Connect, so it's a it's a process that runs uh, near one of your domain controllers, and this is what allows you to really kind of connect the two together. So there's some connection between understanding who Sean is in local Active Directory and who Sean is in Azure Active Directory. Uh, they're not the same again, but they are synchronized with one another, and that's why Sean can lock onto his desktop, use his local Active Directory, access other cloud services that are connected to. Uh, as, through Azure Active Directory, so this pro provides this kind of seamless single sign-on that, that's a part of it. Oftentimes, Microsoft also calls this modern authentication, so that's that's pretty cool. So again, same view of where we started before, where we had this local Active Directory in infrastructure using Azure Active Directory Connect to connect up to Azure Active Directory. So again, they're separate, but they can they can work with one another. Now, once we look at those users who we had on local, local Active Directory on-premise, um, we can see all those same basic users. However, now they're on a very flat type of uh, type of view. They no longer are in a hierarchical kind of view. So it's very important to know that once you start to move to these cloud services that you're really moving towards a, a flat area, but you're associating them with one another. So this connectivity between Azure AD Connect um, is great. However, there are other ways in order to connect them. Uh, one thing that's that was uh, newly released is something called Azure AD Connect Cloud Provisioning. It is something that can work with Azure AD Connect, so you can have one of those around. But sometimes you may want to connect other uh, directories um, that are different for us. So right now, if you have a Azure AD Connect and you want to connect, um, you have, uh, let's say, multiple local Active Directory instances, they're in their own special forest, and you want these two or three or four different organizations separate to all come together into one Azure Active Directory tenant. So it's kind of one instance of that for an organization. Now, normally you'd have to have Azure Active Directory Connect deployed. You can only have one in this, in this example. Um, and that, wherever you have that Azure AD Connect process running on some Windows server, it also has to, from a networking perspective, see all of the other forests so it can connect in and synchronize those. With Azure AD Connect Cloud Provisioning, you don't need that. However, there's some other limitations that that uh, that it can't do either. So Azure AD Connect does way more way more things, but this could be a good uh, method to for for some organizations to, to 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 leverage this as they start to migrate up to the cloud. If it's going to be long running and you have more kind of complex scenarios, then you really have to do the AD Connect Sync and and make sure that it has access to all the other 
uh, uh, local Active Directory for us. If not, this might be a good example. But again, wanted to bring this up as, as it was new and very interesting. Now, another another thing that's out there, so it's called Azure Active Directory Domain Services. Now, we're getting into the long names. Um, now, this one it essentially is a local Active Directory, fully compatible with what Windows Server Active Directory does with some limitations. So, uh, the whole point of this is, uh, when you are moving more towards a cloud world, and let's say you have more of your identities that are in Azure Active Directory, or maybe you, you don't even have a local Active Directory at all, you start it all in the cloud, you can leverage Azure Active Directory domain services to essentially provide uh, the local Active Directory capabilities without having to actually deploy a domain controller. So this is more of a, of a SaaS type of capability for a local Active Directory, but it works in a very different way. The best target for this are really other Windows servers. So if you have a, uh, a web-based application where you develop it yourself or it's a third party and it has to run in a Windows server environment, it has to have a local Active Directory, this could be a really good middle ground without having to say, oh goodness, I have to start now start having a local Active Directory. However, um, uh, and again, you can have uh, 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 this deployed as a service, add in those additional servers, you can still manage it like you normally did with users and computers. I'll show that in a little bit, uh, but the structure is a little bit different. And this is not ideal, not recommended, shouldn't be used with your workstations. Uh, there are some limitations around that. And one of them is that if you start to have your workstations, excuse me, in, in this type of environment, it really starts to mess things up when you start to look at how do you do uh, Azure Active Directory directly joined workstations and manage it through policies. But now you have this local Active Directory that is Azure Active Directory domain services, it really gets screwed up. So really try and stay away from it. So really good in terms of lifting shift or building new applications that need it, that you can't be SaaS and you don't want to be uh, shackled down to what you do with local Active Directory. Uh, there's actually also one other really cool benefit as well, which is if you have a local Active Directory that synchronizes with, a, with Azure Active Directory, uh, all of those users that you've synchronized are going to Azure Active Directory. But what if I create an account that's only in Azure Active Directory, cloud-only accounts as we call them? So those users are not a part of your local Active Directory. Great for contractors, great for you know, other types of resources. Well, when Azure Active Directory domain services uh, comes alive, it actually has a, a copy of its users list of everything that you put that's synchronized with local Active Directory as well as Azure Active Directory all combined together. So now you can create a cloud account that is now uh, uh, visible in this Azure Active Directory domain services. So again, here kind of representing that you have these three or four components, local Active Directory, Azure AD Connect synchronizing into Azure Active Directory services, and Azure Active Directory domain services uh, is provided as a service so that you can do all these areas. So one of the reasons why we want to do these sessions is, wow, this can be very confusing. There's a lot of these pieces, but hopefully, you know, this kind of explains how these areas are being synchronized. And then once you get this in, you know, uh, available in your environment, now you kind of look like this. In this specific example, everything we had before in the in the bottom and to the right, now we've added on this other virtual network work inside of um, uh, inside of Azure, and now we have these Azure Actor uh, Actor Directory domain services. Now you see in here, it looks like it's a a server, but it's really not. It's really just two IP addresses that you see. So when you deploy a server in that environment and you say, hey, I want to join, we normally do Cloud Corp dot whatever your organization is. When we join that, it'll it'll see the domain controller, it'll join it, um, and that's actually normally where you start to put AD users and computers, so you can actually see what's going on. The other thing that's different in this is that uh, you're normally used to installing act, uh, local Active Directory when the first time you're a domain admin, can do everything. You don't get to be domain admin in this environment. There are, there are a specific group, I'll show that in a little bit, where you get access to, so you're effectively like a domain admin to do all the domain admin things that you're allowed to do. So, because remember, you're not actually managing these services. Microsoft runs it as a service. Uh, there is still a charge for it, but you don't have to patch it, manage it, and update it. They just continue to deliver that as a service for you. So, if we take a look at that Cloud Corp here, this example, cloudcorp.agileit.com, uh, um, you'll see, you know, we had a lot of these same users that were there before. Um, and these started off at the, at, at one point in local Active Directory, sync with Azure Active Directory, now over there. And they come into this default uh, OU of a AADDC users. They build that out, all the users are put in there. And now they're just users to assign to what app, whatever application you want. You want to put a SQL server up there, you want to put a, you know, some other type of line of business application, you can do it. When we look at inside of the 
the Azure portal for this specific one, you'll see that there's a couple of IP addresses, private IP addresses, because is what we assigned to it. That's pretty much all you see, not much to it. So once it's deployed to do your administration within that local Active Directory, like I said, you have to deploy a server, put on Active Directory users and computers and the management tools, and then you can see and manage it just as, as, as anything else with the, with the remote tools. You can add additional ones if, if you want for other purposes or testing or whatnot, but normally you can get away with, with just one of them. Um, so again here, so the, what I mentioned before is there's this, there's a security group called AD, uh, AAD DC, I think it's represented for domain controller, administrator. So by putting people into this group, which is again, managing Azure Active Directory, these users will be a part of the local Active Directory in order to manage them. So that's that you gotta make sure to do that or else you'll log in and you won't have any admin access. Uh, but again, the central point of this is all Azure Active Directory. So if we look in here, when we just created some test uh, uh, you know, servers and computers, join the domain, they automatically go into this environment here, AADDC computer. So once they join, they get added into here and then you, and then you can manage them the way, the way that you want. Again, still a very, very look and feel local active directory because that's what it is. So now as we start to expand all of our view where in this view here, now we have this, this blue box here in the middle. This is really saying that I can have in Azure, my own virtual network, Deploy, uh, deploy a local Active Directory instance, just like I would on-prem, but it's running as a virtual machine in Azure. This normally is a good view when you want to have, um, if you have a local on-premise uh, Active Directory and you say, well, what if something happens or you know, we, we move or, or we catch fire? I still need to have my local Active Directory. So by putting it as a virtual directory, or I'm sorry, as, as a virtual machine in Azure, I get a little bit more of that safeguard. It's the local Active Directory. Active Directory is a, is a multi-master type thing. So whatever I have in one, I have in the other. Uh, so between what's in the, the bottom box there is synchronizing as it naturally would with local Active Directory in the, in the, in the middle area. Um, but again, all of this is being synchronized up with Azure Active Directory, and then they're being synchronized again back into the Azure Active Directory domain services um, as you move along. So um, now one of the one of the things that we're working on with customers and a talk, you know, it's a future tech talk is really, well, once I've done done this, can I really get to a point where I remove local active directory altogether, where I don't have it on prem, I don't have it in Azure either, and I'm only doing things through local active um, through, I'm sorry, through Azure Active Directory, and maybe for those line of business applications use uh, Azure Active Directory domain services? The answer is yes, but there is a process to go through it, things you have to consider. And one of the things that normally is a stumbling block for a lot are, well, I have all these other applications, even if I have it now, you know, and so I, I really still need local Active Directory to handle a lot of that for me. So one in combination with a local Active Directory, or if you wanted to redeploy or migrate those applications towards using Azure Active Directory domain services, well, you know, you know, how do I get access to those applications for those people? So there's something called Azure Active Directory Application Proxy. Now, what this does is essentially you get your 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 kind of Windows application they have. Most of them are web-based or has some kind of other entry point. There's ways to handle that as well. And I want to be able to both make it uh, published so that when people go into Azure Active Directory, go into the My Apps page, and, and they want to see that application that before they had to you know, a VPN in, know the URL, so you put on a SharePoint site, but that thing's not being updated, right? And there's no, you know, they have to protect that with all these other Windows things. So to, to alleviate yourself from a lot of that, you can use Azure Active Directory application proxy that allow, that works with Azure Active Directory, your, your essentially your single sign-on through there, but allow it to connect and route through uh, into your local premise. Now, again, you, you get to define this, and there's some requirements that you have to have from a, from a firewall perspective to allow outbound traffic and, that seems a little bit different, but what, actually, what Azure Active Directory Application Proxy does is it creates an outbound connection, and then as it gets approved, it lets the connections go through. Normally, you used to open in a port to go in. This way, it does it uh, differently, where you don't have to open ports to go in. This thing already creates the outbound connection that you've already defined and, and secured. So when you think of it, when people sign into this, and here we talk about signals, so when uh, people log on to Azure Active Directory again, one of those benefits to say, hey, well, you know, are they coming from uh, the policies that I've defined? Are they coming from a corporate managed device? Do you know, are they coming from a location that I provide? Are they MFA'd? If any of those things are not true, I can block it and I can do all that versus just setting up a VPN with a username and password that, that I try to control as best I can. So this is still doing a very web-based, still allows you to put all the policies. And when they do get access, 
that they can see those applications and then going through it through the uh, through a, through a connector. So this is something you would install on, um, you know, near your 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 applications, whether it was in Azure using Azure Active Directory domain services, or is even running as Azure as an infrastructure, or it was running in on prem. You could do it any one of these combinations, um, and you can get access to these applications and the Azure AD. Uh, application proxy working in conjunction with Azure Active Directory handles a lot of the 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 the, the mappings as well as handling Kerberos tickets and TLM and those sorts of things. So very interesting to to, to start to use. So now when you think again about back at that infrastructure, you know there's lots of different pieces. You can have all of this deployed in your environment. Um, you know I wouldn't say that's great for long-term happiness, but uh, you know, but it allows you to way to, to, to transition and, you know, you can use all of these pieces together. You can use that as you slowly transition to all cloud. And it's really something that we're focused here uh, at Agile IT is really leveraging these Microsoft cloud services in order to really kind of get to a world where you don't need to use local active directory. But if you really needed it for a line of business application, you could uh, you could uh, uh, leverage Azure Active Directory domain services to provide that uh, facilitation for you. If you have a local Active Directory, you can synchronize those users and groups um, you know, into Azure Active Directory. Again, they're separate, but they allow you to connect. But over time, if you get rid of your local Active Directory, I get rid of domain controllers, I get rid of um, uh, the, the, the connecting service, um, and now it gives me uh, a much better, more modern way to do things um, uh, inside of the cloud. You know, the next extension, uh, once you have that as well as for a lot of customers, you know, who are bound by certain types of uh, regulatory compliance. The nice thing here, when you use less of the local Active Directory and more of the services-based side of it, is that Microsoft is certifying up to that level. So if you have, if you're doing uh, compliance and and you have to get through our audit and regulation, well, you have to manage, do policies, SOPs, and stay up to date with the latest version all the time. And it's really not where people want to put their time. And so normally. You know, by freeing yourself of that, you put that responsibility, right? This goes to the SaaS part of it on Microsoft. They pay for those audits. You know, they can give you uh, the, the audit report to give to your auditor and you don't have to do that work. So it's a bit of a trade off, but it's, it's much needed. So hopefully in, in my little cheat sheet here, that gives you an example of all these different local active directories, how they're used together. Um, and so it's just kind of a good primer. So when we talk in the next sessions about getting rid of local active director, we've already gone through these topics. So I really don't need to explain it again. Um, you can always go back and enjoy it for your you know, weekly viewing. Um, and, and, uh, but then again, and, but what's also important, I would stress to everybody, whenever you write any kind of documents, proposals, or communicate with anybody, including ourselves, try to use the appropriate name when you go through it. Because when we just say things like <clears throat> local active directory or the one covered or the one I hate the term, I hear it all the time, they, they say, well, domain, customer wants a new domain, they're going from an old domain, gonna do this domain. What domain? Local Active Directory domain, Azure Active Directory, custom domain, is it a, we talk about SMTP domain? That's a whole nother topic probably, but it's very important to understand the whole usage and then which service specifically are we talking about. So with that, that is my session. I thought I ran through that pretty quick. Hopefully it uh, you guys uh, were able to follow along. Um, and uh, hopefully just kind of gives a good primer of all these different active directories that's out there. Great, thank you so much, Conrad. <clears throat> um, so we're about to open it up for our open Q&A. For those of you watching on YouTube or uh, watching this on the blog, a uh, reminder that Tech Talks are a service for our MSP and CSP clients. We do make the information available online but after we cut off the recording, we do open things up for an open Q&A. If you are watching online, please give us a like and follow. If you need help with your Active Directories um, or really anything within the Microsoft Cloud, feel free to reach out to us. Mm -hmm.